Sharpen up on the little things. Um, you know, we can't really do too much, but you know, for the most part, just getting in, doing shell drills, make sure our defense is tight, and just working on offensive concepts that um, you know can bowl well for us in the future within uh, games. When when you guys hit that little bit of a speed, I know you missed some of that time because you were still getting over uh, your, your ankle. But do you think that the lack of practice time, if you had some knee growth things, contributed to? Um, I mean, you could, you know, always when you have opportunities to practice, it kind of, you know, helps your individual rhythm as a player to get on the court and just simply just play five on five. And, you know, when you're not practicing and not doing much, the only five on five you have is games. You know, it's kind of tough um, to play how you want to play. So, when you guys do practice, how important is your session for that or even after the practice? I mean, that's just been the, the diagnosis of our season pretty much, just uh, the film room. You know, we're a pretty smart bunch of guys. A lot of guys have played a lot of you know, games and um, well-seasoned vets. So, um, you know, we've done a great job over the course of the year of just you know, doing what we do in the film room and applying it to the court. And, um, you know, it's worked for us. Our record kind of reflects it. So, so when Frank points something out, you guys can then go, yeah, he's right. You can see it visually. Um, you know, whether it's pointing out or just, you know, just, you know, whether it's like we're not boxing out. We have a thing where, you know, we're not the best at boxing out because we have great rebounders. And, you know, sometimes it bites us and, you know, we just try to apply it to the next game and just get better at it. We've had a couple shots this year, buzzer beaters uh, from half court to quarters court. Is that sort of your specialty? Um, I guess. Yeah, I guess it is. Uh, you know, I don't really care about percentages too much. I just play basketball and just shoot because it's fun. And it's plus, if you hit the shot, then, you know, the crowd goes crazy and it's uh, exciting. So seems like teammates have been targeting you for those those looks. Yeah, they. Uh, you know, we have a golden rule that uh, you know I get every um, you know last second shot except for the fourth quarter. That's the Browns' time, but. Uh, first and third is kind of it's mine. So how would that come about? I, you know, I've hit like ten of them. I don't know. So <laughs> that's how it come about. But now they all just automatically yeah, look for you. just automatic. Yeah. The, the one you hit in Portland that didn't count uh, is that the longest shot you made in a game? Um, so I think in, the the in the NBA, NBA game, yeah, game yeah. So this was going back to the Utah high school. You were hitting shots like that too. Um, no, not necessarily. Um, but kind of just started in the NBA, yeah. How would you assess where you are individually and then second unit as a whole? Um, I'm, I'm at a good place. Uh, ever since I've been healthy, I've been playing the way I play and um, you know contributing to the team in a larger factor. Second unit, um, you know, just continue work in progress as we um, you know continue to dial in our rotation, our lineups. Um, you know, and just camaraderie on the court and chemistry. Uh, you know, we do a good job some games, and some games is you know, kind of off, but you know, you can't really be, you know, perfect or consistent for 82 games. You know, that's kind of tough to ask um, as a unit, but, um, you know, we do our best to, you know, have that effort every single night. Uh, it's kind of that time of year where the transaction market's firing up again. And, uh, and, and do you feel like, there was something you learned going through the process last year that, that you can apply to this year about sort of uh, just just dealing with that. Um, I mean, just gotta just don't really worry about it. You know, for me, I, I've been in trade rumors ever since I came here. I think that's just a thing that happens. You know, when you're a Laker, um, you know, you're always in trade rumors, and especially around this time. So. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. You just control what you control, so. We were just talking to Kuz about how he's sort of your uh, designated buzzer beater guy. Have you noticed that? 
Well, he hit like four in a row uh, in consecutive games in either two for one situations to end, end the clocks. And, uh, um, you know, obviously early, early in the year, he had some heaves that went in as well. Uh, so, um, yeah, we've got some plays drawn up for him to, you know, get some clean looks late in the, late in the quarter. What, what do you see as uh, maybe the common thread? Because some guys don't like throwing it up because they feel like it affects their shooting percentage or something like that. Do you think it's sort of that is the chief thing of characteristic of a buzzer beater guy? I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's probably just uh, a little bit of chance with him. You know, he knocked, knocked in some, uh, you know, some deep buzzer beaters. And then, um, you know, one of our plays to get a quick look, uh, you know, late in the quarter, you know, is, is that type of action. He's a for Anthony for him. And he's knocked down a few of those too. So I don't know if it's a, if it's a mindset. I mean, he's just a good shooter. And we try to get a good shot for a good shooter in, in those situations. Anthony Davis was talking a little bit last night about how he challenged the team, just throw it up there and I can go get it, like for alley-oops and stuff like that. Do you feel like there's like a balance that the team has to find in making sure that they don't test him too much on that or like that they aren't just throwing like wild passes around the rim? Is that a concern by you? It is a concern. We don't want to just throw wild passes at the rim. And, and more importantly, we're going to we've got to read the help. You know, a lot of times we throw it up there when there's two or three defenders in the lane and, um, you know, then you're going to a, have a turnover and, and B, put them in a compromising position in midair. So, um, you know, you got to be smart about it. But, you know, when when there's space, you know, he's he's got a, a, you know, a crazy ability to seemingly catch everything and finish everything. Um, you know, the best I've ever seen. And um, you saw that last night with, uh, you know, with Danny's missed pass that ended up being a flush. Some coaches have for that three-point spacing. Some coaches say we want to shoot X number of threes a game. For your vertical spacing, the lob threats you have, do you have a lobs per game target? Or is it I, sort of I do not. And uh, they come in different ways, right? It's you know, the, the pick and roll or, or the pin down where you know, you're drawing help off two-man action. And then there's there's just uh, straight blow buys where you know, guys are under the basket. You know, um, and then help, you know, they, they help up from the baseline and have the ability to throw it to the rim. So there, there are different types of uh, lobs that, that those guys are catching, and I do not have a, a target number, no. Frank, you mentioned last night that 80s points were more in the rhythm of your offense than the first time you played them. Where, where specifically do you see like a, a change in his comfort level offensively? Uh, I just think the versatility. You know, I think uh, the encouragement uh, to, to grow his three-point game um, you know, has, has really created a lot of opportunities, not just with those shots, uh, but, you know, you have to honor them out there, you know, and uh, when you have to honor them out there, you got to push up and that opens up driving lanes for him. But, I mean, you know, he, he gets offensive rebounds, he gets lobs and like we said, a variety of different ways, has a three point shot, um, a variety of different ways they score in the low post. And you know, obviously he's great at getting out in transition too. So, um, you know, he's scoring in, you know, in a variety of ways and, and showing great versatility. I know he's been in South Bay a lot this year, but what have you seen from Taylor Horton Tucker just coming into the NBA as a rookie during his first season? Yeah, well, he's worked really hard on his body. You know, I think that's the first thing that sticks out. Uh, he's gotten himself in, in great, great shape and, and leans down a little bit. And, um, you know, as a result, he's, he's playing really well, you know, for South Bay. He's had some, uh, some monster performances. And, um, you know, you, you look at someone that age and you, and you feel like you probably can't contribute right away. Uh, you know, with a, with a playoff caliber team, uh, but he's had some moments where you, you ask, maybe he can't. You know, and, uh, and we'll continue to, to to keep an eye on that, and uh, we're encouraged about what you know what he's doing in his first year. Uh, that can obviously be hard for guys, I think. Probably, is there anything that you've told him to like try and help him stay engaged while he's away from the team? Oh, we're just uh, that we're following his progress, and uh, you know, we believe in in, in the type of player he's going to be, and. You know, we know it's probably going to take a little bit of time, but you know he, he should be aggressive trying to trying to make it happen right away, and um, you know always be ready. Um, with AD defending Brandon, I think NBA tracking had him holding Brandon two two for ten last night. Why is AD such a good wing defender? Well, he's just a he's a great defender in general, you know, and um, he's, he's got great length, great hands, and great feet. Great, you know, great, great mobility. So, um, you know, whoever he's guarding, he, he has the ability to to play one-on-one -on -one defense probably as, as well as anybody in the NBA. And um, you know, I think it's just all those natural abilities. And then, you know, you, you, you add in there the instincts, you know, to anticipate, you know, which helps separate them too.
Like at, at this stage, what's more valuable for this team? Film session or on the court sessions? Are they both equal? If you can get them. They're both equal. You know, our, our, our guys have an ability to, to learn on in, in the film room and take it out onto the court, you know, without touching the court, uh, which is better probably than, than any team I've been a part of. But, you know, the, the live reps of, you know, moving and talking and you know, communicating with each other and reacting, um, you know, that, that just takes it to another level.